Stay calm. Stay calm, everybody. There Relax. Is, is. Catch him, buddy. Get him. Nice job. Nice one. Woo. Nice one. Yeah. Woo. That's what I came for right there. That's a nice job. Thank you, buddy. There you go. You're done for the day. <laughs> I got to take a picture of that one. Watch, watch this one. Oh, shit. Yeah. Right. Nice, That's baby. A nice one. Oh, Let me hold that. Hold on, hold on. Another one. Yeah, I want to hold that bad boy. First white sea bass ever. I've been. Oh, that's your first one ever. Yeah, man, I've been hunting. I've been oh, yeah, hunting bro. for him, dude. Good job, bro. Hell yeah. Real anglers, baby. Hey folks, and welcome to the Real Langers Fishing Show. I'm your host, Kevin Brannan. On today's episode, it's gonna be more of a documentary film. What I wanted to do on this film was actually document the white sea bass, the croaker, out here in the Channel Islands area, and not just catching this beautiful, magnificent fish that uh, is cherished out here in the Channel Islands region of California, and up and down the coast of Southern California, and even into the Central Coast, all the way up to the Bay Area, is the white sea bass. A lot goes into this fishery. It's a big commerce for fishing boats, landings, fuel docks, deck hands, rod manufacturers, tackle manufacturers, everybody when these white sea bass move in and they go wild. A big topic about the fishing industry is about sustainable fishery and how do we sustain a fishery. The purpose of this film is again is to show what goes on behind the scenes in the white sea bass fishery with the grow out pins, with Hub SeaWorld and their documentation of white sea bass and the microchips that go into the sea bass so they can do scientific research. We interview some captains on this episode. We interview some fishermen. We also interview Frank Sullivan, who takes care of the white sea bass pins where we actually grow white sea bass, just like you might see at a trout farm or something like that. We do the same thing here on the ocean for these white sea bass, so we're gonna hear from him. And we also have an interview with a representative from Hub SeaWorld to tell you what they do as far as tagging the white sea bass, releasing them and documenting where they catch them at up and down the coast. So this is more of a documentary film, not just about you know catching a big monster trophy fish, which a white sea bass is, but we wanted to go behind the scenes and show you guys what goes into this fishery here in Channel Islands in California. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this documentary of what goes on with white sea bass fishing here in the Channel Islands in Southern California. Let's go. My name's Ryan Conlon. I'm the second captain on the Mirage. Been on the Mirage for 15 seasons, <clears throat> and we're gonna talk about sea bass fishing. As everybody knows, sea bass fishing is prominent up in the Northern Channel Islands, a main source of uh, interest for anglers. Croaker fishing's huge for us. It's huge for us. People come from all around to, to come and catch these fish. They're, they're wonderful eating fish. They're beautiful. They, they get big. Um, and they generate a, a lot of business as far as an industry goes. And, and they're a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do. Um, I, I'd say without croaker fishing, this area wouldn't be what, what it's known for now. And it hasn't always been this good around here, but the last decade, decade and a half, sea bass fishing's been really good and it's generated a whole business all on its own. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really grateful, really grateful for the efforts of the hatcheries too. I think that's probably doing a big role in the increase of numbers and, you know, the, the regulation helps a lot as well. Always abide by the regulation. It's set for sustainability and, um, yeah, it's huge. It's huge. I love it. Hi, my name is Ashton Ferris. I'm from Palmdale, California. I'm out here on Channel Island Sport Fishing today on the Mirage. Just hooked into a nice white sea bass, first time ever in my life. Uh, I've been fishing the ocean now for about 10 years. Uh, I started off in aqueducts here in California fishing for striper. And ever since I got into uh, fishing the ocean, I've been hooked ever since. It was uh, pretty phenomenal. We got it around, we, got, we caught the fish around seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, 
it was just amazing, man. He torpedoed up into the front of the stern, to the stern up to, to the uh, head of the boat, and uh, it was just fire, man. What can I say? Yeah, well, uh, the, the sea bass have been biting lately, so uh, that's one of the fish I've been targeting for a while. They're very hard to catch, and uh, I was just very blessed to get on them this morning, and uh, we knocked them out. My name's Sean Stewart, and uh, I'm the uh, owner and the captain of the Grey Light as well as the Aloha Spirit. And uh, become pretty fond of uh, the Channel Islands. Been fishing here my entire life, just about. And um, we got a very fruitful area here. It's got quite a few seasons, and uh, the favorite season for most of the anglers is our white sea bass season. It's typically is uh, late April, early May, through sometimes all the way through uh, August. And uh, it's a good opportunity for people to get out and get a fish that's, you know, 15 pounds up to 50 pounds. Um, you don't necessarily have to be an experienced angler to do it. Very fortunate to have the diversity up here, the terrain and the, and the Channel Islands, and, uh, different different places for these fish to congregate, give us an opportunity at them. And um, it's one of my favorite fish to uh, target and put up, put our anglers on. It's uh, something they look forward to. We try to specialize in that on, on both the Aloha and the uh, and the uh, Gray Light here, and, um, and we, we book up a year in advance uh, for this time of year just for these fish, and it's something that's real special for our anglers. And uh, we all, as crew members, up and down the dock look forward to these. And uh, it's whether we catch them on sardines or squid or, or jigs or whatever it might be. Um, get one or two of those fish on the boat not everybody has to catch one one day but they see the impressiveness of these fish and they they absolutely go wild on them they love them so that's my take on them love them some of my favorite fish and i'm going to continue to try to try to keep my anglers on the fish as long as i'm able to do this when the season comes on for these sea bass it's uh it, it, it's kind of a, a jump for all of us you know the boats that don't have reservations fill up as soon as there's a count um, it helps with uh, getting passengers on all the boats up and down the dock to get us started on our season and uh, kind of just flows right back into the summer after that. It just really gets people into it, especially when they get an opportunity to catch that first fish um, or even see that first fish and have an opportunity at them. It makes them want to come back for more and then uh, trying to get kids on that type of stuff. That's our future and uh, it, it holds well for um, from obviously us on the boats but as well as people that sell the tackle rent the tackle um, the rods all that you know um, it's good for, for for everybody in the harbor here uh, in general uh, fuel I mean you name it um, it's definitely sparks a lot of interest and uh, a lot of uh, economy for our area and our harbor you know even even the hotels book up for guys coming the night before to to, to get a night's sleep it's just, uh, it's, good to, it's good in general for, for all of us here. Hi, my name is Mike Shane. I'm with Hubs SeaWorld Research Institute, and I am the director of our fisheries replenishment program. And that program is a program that I've been working on for over 30 years. And we've been replenishing white sea bass stocks in the ocean, working as contractors to the Department of Fish and Wildlife to operate this program. So since the early 1980s, we've released over two and a half million white sea bass into the ocean. Fish are currently uh, the hatcheries down in, in uh, San Diego and Carlsbad, where the program operates out of. Uh, when fish at the hatchery are grown up to three or four inches in size, are then distributed to various volunteer-based grow-out sites that are sponsored and, and supported by the Coastal Conservation Association. Um, those sites hold the fish and grow them until they get to be eight to ten inches in size. Once they're eight to ten inches in size, they release their fish. And once they're released, we try to go out and recover those fish successive years, year after year. All the fish that we release in the program have a tag in it. It's a small, what we call a coated wire tag inside this yellow circle that we put into the head of every single fish we release. Once we get a head back and we ask fishermen if you catch a legal sized white sea bass to cut the heads off and save them in one of the freezers up and down the coastline and almost all the sport fishing landings have these freezers we can get the heads back we can then use this device to scan the head of the fish and we pass it over the tag if, if, if the head sorry if the tags inside there it'll beep like that then we have to dissect it out read the numbers that are etched on that tag and get an understanding of where that fish uh, came from or the history of that fish in the program we, we know where it was spawned we know where it was delivered to the grow out and we now have the site that it was collected We've seen fish come back to this program 20 years later. It's a big pond out here in the Pacific Ocean. 
getting these fish back. So we're seeing movements. A lot of these fish are being caught uh, on the offshore islands and offshore Southern California, but we don't know the whole time they've been out there, what, what the distances they've traveled. I mean, they could probably go down to Mexico or up to uh, Monterey or San Francisco, but eventually we catch them back here in Southern California. So that's a little bit about the program. We really appreciate your support. Remember to save your heads and place them on one of the freezers up and down the coastline. Good morning, my name is Frank Sullivan from uh, the uh, Channel Islands Grow Out facility here in Channel Islands Harbor. I'm a member of the Channel Islands Yacht Club and that's where I first got introduced to this program. We work with uh, Ocean Resources Enhancement hatch Hatchery uh, Program to provide white sea bass uh, juvenile fish to be released into the ocean. So about 1985, the legislature passed an act to allow uh, for the collection of fees called the Ocean Enhancement Stamp to uh, enhance fisheries opportunities. Part of that program was the creation of uh, the Hubs SeaWorld Research Institute. This facility was created by the members of the Channel Islands Yacht Club. Ocean Resource Enhancement uh, Program has released 2.6 million fish since its inception, and this facility has released over 255,000 fish during that, during that same period of time. The fishermen who work on this program see it as a way to give back to the resource uh, that we enjoy so much by replacing some of the fish that we, we catch. At, in the 1980s, 90s, the white sea bass had uh, become almost endangered. Very few were being caught. And this program, we believe, has enhanced that fishery so that now we're getting limits of fish caught quite frequently during the season. The fees that we pay through the ocean enhancement stamp come both, both from recreational and commercial fisheries. And it's, we feel it's a good investment, especially for the charter boats that uh, operate extensively during the uh, white sea bass season. Uh, late spring, early summer, and it has helped immensely for the uh, commercial fishery as well. We use volunteers only at this facility. Uh, I'm like the lead uh, pen operator. As I said before, most of us really want to give back to the resource. We enjoy the fishing around uh, the Channel Islands and up and down the coast, and we like to make sure that we can continue to do that and that the future generations can do it as well. On the night of release, I sent an email out to most of the people that have told me that they're interested, and we also posted on Facebook and other social media. And we usually get a pretty good-sized uh, group of people to come down and watch the event. A lot of them are family members with kids, and uh, not everybody can help because we'd probably sink the pens, but a lot of them are able to video it or watch it or uh, just get a, a, in on the excitement of, of seeing the fish released. Facility is run, as I said before, strictly by volunteers. Um, usually, you can get a hold of me by sending me an email at Frank Sullivan. It's F R A N S U L L at charter.net, and I'll put you on our list of proposed uh, volunteers to help us with cleaning or or feeding the fish, or at release time or delivery time. So as you can see, there's a lot that goes into this white sea bass fishery here in the Southern California area, right? You can see from volunteers to captains to fishermen, all that we do to make sure that this beautiful fish is here for years to come so everybody could have a good time catching them. That's just a little glimpse into what we consider a sustainable fishery here in the Chino Islands area. A lot of effort goes in from captains to fishermen, Department of Fish and Wildlife, Hub SeaWorld, and as you can see, even the grow out pins to make sure that this fishery is here for decades to come. I'm Kevin Brandon with a little mini documentary about white sea bass and it kind of shine a light on what recreational fishermen do to make sure we have a sustainable fishery. We'll see you on the next episode. Let's go.